Hey, I'm Jeff Crete here with Tackle Warehouse on Lake Lanier, and I've watched you California guys do this search for these giant bass, and today I'm gonna try to break my own spotted bass record, uh, which was 19 pounds, four ounces, and I've got one over here that I think's 24 pounds, eight ounces, and I'm gonna catch him on a uh, big bite squirrel tail worm. Tune in, out. Oh, you little bastard, you see? You see, that might have been the record. That very possibly right there, you know, when you're throwing big baits like my squirrel tail, that's one of those things that you know you're only gonna have opportunities for big ones. And that fish right there followed me. And I'm gonna say probably he was in that 15, 18 pound range. Everybody throws a shaky head and everybody knows how good it catches them. I mean, it's just a bass catching bait. But one of the, one of the biggest deals when, I, when I'm fishing docks or really anytime I'm throwing a shaky head is when I throw it in there for that first drop, I want to keep a, keep a little bit of uh, some, some slack in my line. So many of those fish are going to hit that bait on that first drop. And uh, that, that's really, a, I mean, that's a, I, I'd say 50% of your bites are going to come on that first drop. So let it fall. Keep just enough, you know, keep just enough uh, tension in your line where you can feel it. but. But don't, don't, I see a lot of guys throw out there and click the reel and then they'll let that worm sling back. So don't do that. And when you, and the other thing guys do is they overwork it. Um, I always try to pull this thing around until I get it in something, maybe a, a rock or, or, or whatever. And once I get it there, I want to, you want to move it without moving it, if that makes sense. Shake it and want, shake it in place. And that's when you're going to get most of your bites. But when you throw that thing in there, don't, don't keep your line real tight. Good one, little fatty. Little squirrel tail worm with a squirrel head. I mean, always get on spotted bass lakes, man. A little fatty right there, man. I like it. Pretty. On a cane, on a cane thumper, I, I, I think one of the biggest things on that is weight size, and I'll vary it. Um, if I'm really working the bait slow, I, I, I'll throw an eighth ounce. And I mean, like that's, you know, like if I'm fishing, uh, uh, you know, maybe sometimes hydrilla or something like that, or when I know they're spawning and they're really not one to eat, I'll even throw an eighth and just wind it real slow. Um, a three sixteenths, I'd say for the for the um, most people, uh, that's probably the most consistent. And I mean, I rig it. I'll rig it. I don't peg it. I throw a three sixteen ounce weight probably, you know, a lot of the time. And I throw a uh, Trocar TK1 four odd hook, just an offset. I don't like the EWG style hook on this bait. And then, you know, there's other times when I want to get the bait a little deeper and uh, wind it pretty hard and I'll go on up to maybe a quarter or even more than that. And, and a lot of it depends on the speed. The faster I want to reel it, the heavier weight I use. And I just, you know, I like a tungsten, like a, a uh, this is right now on this bay right now. I've got a, a 316 ounce uh, Eco Pro tungsten weight on it. Not gonna quite make the 18 pound mark, but. I mean, he's probably a seven, you know, an old cane thumper. I mean, he's he's definitely a dandy. <laughs> Smoked it. <laughs> That's fun. Scared me. On these lakes, you know, we're right now. We're talking. You know, we're looking. It's, it's April. Um, we're on we're on a spot of bass lake now, you know, so uh, that's why I'm throwing, you know, shaking the squirrel tail worm and, and things like that, just because that's always a big player 
on spotted bass. But you know, the, the, play, the first place I start looking is always uh, the pockets. You know, that, they're gonna spawn in these pockets and then always, you know, the points leading into the pockets. So the, fir the first thing you wanna think of always this time of year is, um, I, I just think, okay, where are they gonna spawn? And then I'll look from there. I'll, I'll start where they spawn, and if, if they're not up there shallow, then I'm going to start looking at the first deep water close by. So, you know, I'll always uh, take into account where they spawn. That, that's the, that's the, the biggest thing, because that is what's on their mind right now, is spawning. You know, the gear I use for shaking a worm is, is, is what I use all the time. I use a, uh, the Falcon. Care Series, Jeff Cree Signature Series rod. This, this was, I designed this for shaking a worm. This is also the rod I throw a, a drop shot with. Seven foot longs, medium heavy. Um, I'm using a 10 pound braid, and then I'm running that in, tying a double uni, running it into, uh, right now I'm throwing six pound high seas fluorocarbon. Uh, I throw the, the squirrel head by Jewel. I really like it because it has a really light wire hook, which I think is really important. And then I throw the squirrel tail worm by Big Bite. Uh, these are these are the this is a this is a, a system that I will always have in my boat, 365 days a year, regardless of what lake I go to. I don't care if I'm at Falcon Lake. Um, matter of fact, the last time I was at Clear Lake, I caught them pretty good, and this is exactly what I threw. But this time of year, we're in the spring uh, on a lake full of spots, so you know I've kind of keyed around docks and behind docks. And uh, you know you always you always visualize on, in your mind that you know a lot of bass live on these docks, so when they spawn they just pull up behind them. But uh, ten pound braid uh, with a fluorocarbon leader is a trick, and try the big bite squirrel tail worm and the squirrel head that's by Jewel. Normally, when that bait deflects off that pile of rocks, that's when you get bit, get bit. And that's your job. That's what you've got to do. You've got to have a bait that will get down and hit the bottom. The deflection is the key, it creates a lot of racket, and when that crankbait does something goofy, that's when you get bit. And here's the deal, when you do that, like that, you catch big giant smallmouth. Like that, I mean look at the size of that fish. I mean can you see, look how fat he is. <laughs> 